So far, we've rebuilt the top end, we've done suspension work, we've installed a winch, heated hand grips, seat cover, and a ton of other great stuff. What else is left? Stay tuned, you'll find out. Hey everyone, I am Josh with Motorcycle and Power Sports News, and this week we've still got some great content here for you with a wheel bearing replacement. Now in this, this, as I've mentioned, it's about 14 years old. It's seen quite a few miles. These have a tendency to wear out because they're in the mud, the muck, the slop. Now they're sealed, but there's no keeping everything out of there. So we are going to show you the proper way to replace a rear wheel bearing on this Sportsman 800 here. Now, while we've got one of the wheels off, we are going to go ahead and we may as well have some fun with this too. That being said, Bronco ATV sent us some wheel spacers for this. Now this will give us a little bit more aggressive stance, stick the front and rear wheels out a little bit more, make it so we've got a more stable platform and let's face it, it's gonna look better. That being said, let's get to work on that wheel bearing. So first things first, back here in the back, in order to get the wheel bearing off, which is what supports this hub assembly right here, Got to get the tire off. Always easiest to get these lugs loose while it's on the ground and just give them like a quarter turn so they're loose. Then we'll jack it up, we'll take the wheel off, then we'll start working on getting the hub out. Sometimes with these, they will actually get to the point where they will get bad enough where you can jiggle this side to side. With this one, I'm just feeling a little bit of roughness that you can tell is in this hub here, and that's why we're gonna go ahead and replace this. That being said, this cap comes off. Underneath it, we'll find the nut for the CV axle. And we'll go ahead and get that off. Once we pull this cotter key off, pull the nut, we'll be able to pull this hub out and then we'll want to start pushing the axle back a little bit. Now I've got the nut off, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take just a minute, spray this with some penetrating oil, let this soak in. We'll probably do the same thing with this nut and where these two bolts go in here. That'll give this some time to soak in because this sometimes can be a little bit of a bear. So this is the joy of why we put the penetrating oil on it because I let everything soak for a few minutes, I come back, I can actually move this with my thumb. Now, in a lot of cases, that's not the way that's gonna go down. It may need some persuasion. Make sure that when you're hitting this, you're doing it with a block of wood or something soft like a dead blow hammer. These threads are really, really easy to mess up. So you wanna make sure that you're hitting it with something soft, just get it loose, then we can pull these bolts out and pull this assembly off. Okay, so I've got all the bolts out. I've got the shaft ready to come out of here. It's just sitting in the wheel bearing now. That being said, the bolts out up top here so we can move this up here. The bushings actually go through the control arm here and extend into the wheel hub here. So what we're gonna wanna do is we wanna pull this back. We'll pry this rubber piece away you want to be really careful with it because you don't want to tear this. And work your way around. That being said, with those bushings going through there, just pull them out with a pair of needle nose pliers and you can see where it rides, we'll obviously need to clean those up. I typically, when I set stuff down like this, I make sure what goes where. So I'll know that it, this was the back, that was the front, and that's the back bushing. I'll set that there.
Do the same thing with that one. Now we're gonna take, we're gonna clean this up actually a little bit. Get some of the mud out of here. We'll just use a screwdriver or whatever, especially because this is the old bearing. But we'll get the mud cleaned up out of here and then we're gonna take it over to the press and get this pressed out. So we've got this off, I cleaned it up a little bit and next up is getting the snap ring out of here. Now, this bearing is still a press fit. It's not a super heavy press fit, but it is a press fit but it is all retained by this snap ring right here. That being said, we're gonna put it on the workbench, gonna pull that snap ring out and go from there. Now we've gotta press this that way out of here. Now, when you get this started, it'll typically come out pretty easily then. So, I'm gonna set this up on the stands here. I have the right size collar and the right size head for that. Good. Old one's out. Getting ready for the new one to go in. Now, that being said, we made sure that we've got this area all cleaned up because we want to make sure that the bearing presses in nice and smooth and has the right place to seat in. We're going to take, use the press once again, bearing, collar, press, push that down, go from there. Next thing, put that snap ring back in. It's always difficult to do snap rings, I find, to put them in. One of the keys that I have found is making sure that the pins don't go in too deep, so that way you can actually get the snap ring flush down with it there. Sometimes that's a recipe for it to spring on you, but you should be able to get it here. I'll seat it in and good. Now that we've got the bearing in the hub, we're gonna put all this back together. Now before doing that, clean stuff like this up. Wire brush it, whatever. I would make sure it's probably like a brass wire brush so that way you don't score anything. But clean that up, clean these bushing pieces up too. That way everything goes back together fresh. We don't have dirt, grime, or anything like that in there. So, let's get to work. Whenever you're pulling something apart, especially when you're putting it back together, I always take a peek at the threads on stuff. A, to make sure that they're good, but B, if you look here, you can see this has blue thread locker on it. That being said, when I put it back together, I am gonna put a little bit of that blue thread locker right back on it. Now, I typically stick with blue because of the fact the red is not meant to come apart. Blue is meant to be used in situations where you may need to pull it apart. We just redid the engine and a whole bunch of other stuff on this, so this has got a long life ahead of it. Control arms are back together. Now, when you go to put the hub on, make sure that the shaft is clean, make sure that the center of the hub is clean, make sure the outside of it's clean. Are you noticing a theme about clean here? Yes, it all works better when it's clean. On top of that, the shaft comes out and goes down. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're holding it up in a straight position, whether we do it from the front or we may have to wiggle it here a bit in the back. But in order to get this all to go in and sit flush together, be patient with it, work with it, but this will need to come up some. When you're patient, it slides right together. 
Next up, we're gonna torque this down. 80 foot-pounds is the spec from Polaris on this. You wanna make sure that you stick to that. A, as I've mentioned before in other things, it's always inconvenient to have to go back and pick up your wheel and hub assembly. B, we don't wanna to put too much squeeze on that because if we pull that in too tight, suddenly we're crushing that bearing that we just put in there, which obviously isn't good either. So, like I said, 80 foot-pounds, we'll tighten it down. We'll stick the cotter key through there and we're gonna start the next steps. Now that we've got the bearing in, we're pretty much done here. Except, we're still gonna put the wheel spacers on. That being said, we wanna just take a wire brush and make sure we clean up these areas where the wheel spacer is gonna sit against the hub. I wanna make sure I've got a nice flat surface there for it to sit against because the last thing that we want is we, if we have dirt in there, that dirt can eventually compress or move into that aluminum spacer and with that you end up with what could be loose lug nuts on here. So clean this area up, just it doesn't need to be perfect, just make sure it's nice and clean so we've got a nice flat surface. Put the spacers on, then we'll put the wheels on. Let's toss the spacers on. Now something to be aware of, Bronco includes lug nuts with this and these have a cone on the bottom of them. Now, inside the spacer here, it is set up to be used with these lug nuts. So as you put it on, use the nuts that Bronco includes to hold the spacer to the quad. From there, whatever nuts you have for your wheels, whether it's the factory wheels or if you have an aftermarket wheel, whatever lug nuts you've been using for those, those will be what goes on here. Last but not least, tire. So we've got the rear spacers on, now it's time to do the front. But just so you have an idea of how much better it makes this thing look, before, after, before, after. To me, I got my choice. I'm going with the after look on this. That being said, I wanna thank you guys for tuning in this week. Next week, we've got some more fun in store. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this. If you've got a question or a comment, leave that down below. As always, we'll see you out on the trail.